Samuel Sam, PDOIs. I would like to know whether we are supposed to react to the issues raised in the, here. Uh, that is a priority question, eight, or are we supposed to make any presentation? Pardon? Yes, okay. You are not to limit yourself. Okay, all right, all right. What I said okay. during my introduction okay. remark was that a questionnaire was prepared yeah. when the two teams went upstairs. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. up right. So we just want to share those questionnaires with you. Okay. But you are at liberty to raise any concerns yes, okay. as far as the bill is concerned. Yes. So don't limit yourself, just the bill. Yeah. Be free to raise no, any other issues. That's why you have been consulted. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. I just... Honorable uh, 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 son, you, you, your questions were very pertinent. You raised a legal issue. Well, it's not for us to respond to that, but we refer it to the legal-minded people, the Minister of Justice. They will take it up. We will know every little concern that is raised, and it will be adequately addressed. Just by way of information, not just for you, but for all of us, we have our standing orders, and one of the um, clauses in the standing orders is the mandate and power of this joint committee to recommend amendments as the thing fit. And that is why if you have any proposals, it will be discussed, and if there is need for that amendment, it will be incorporated. And that is why we always want to make sure that the Minister of Justice and the IEC accompany us so that we will have their views on the issues of concern raised by political parties or any other relevant stakeholder or witness. Party and whatever I say here is the position of PDOIS. Um, uh, thank you very much. Thank you. I, I would like to start by emphasizing that the any bill, this election bill, has to be premised on the Constitution. And Section 1, Subsection 2 of the Constitution, this sovereignty in the people, and any representative, like the government, should derive its authority to govern from the people. And in this regard, Section 26 gives right, I mean of the Constitution, gives right to the people to participate in public affairs, including elections, the right to participate, in the right to participate, that means the right to elect and be elected. And to facilitate this, Section 25 makes it a right to form associations, including political parties. And in this regard, to facilitate the exercise of such rights, Section 39 of the Constitution gives right, makes it a right, for a 
citizen of the Gambia of sound mind and 18 years or above to vote in an election, presidential, national assembly, council elections, as well as being entitled to be registered. It's very significant. When we go through the bill to relate to these matters, there is the establishment of the IC in order to be able to facilitate this process. And Section 60 deals with political parties in order to be able to do these matters. Now going to the bill itself, because occasionally there will be reference to the Constitution. When we go to the bill itself, and I'll start with the schedule. Schedule 1. Schedule 1 is supposed to be premised on clauses 2 and 4. Schedule 1. I don't know whether you are with me. That's page 84. Hmm? The fourth schedule. The fourth schedule is uh, at the bottom of, it starts from the bottom of 83. Yes, okay. So going to 84. Yes. It says, it's supposed to be premised on sections 2 and 4. But if you look at clause 4, that is not the case, it's dealing with a different matter. It appears to be clause 10. So it's, it's important we take note of that. Uh, yeah, Michael, yes. Um, schedule 5. The reference is clause or section 104, subsection 9. That's what it says. But that doesn't exist. 104 stops at subsection 5. I don't know whether you see it. Fifth schedule, page 118. Yes. Page 118. Yes. Rules published as subsidiary legislation. Um, schedule 6, which is dealing with the referendum, specifies the draft constitution and uh, it should actually really, in our own opinion, deal with referendum generally than, rather than this specific draft constitution which was actually uh, uh, being tabled and rejected. It should deal with referendum generally. Now, if we go to the bill itself, um, the definition um, Let's say section two, interpretation. Political party, page seven. <coughs> um, where it says political party means an association of Gambian citizens organized to acquire 
and exercise political power and registered as such in accordance with this act. I think that is uh, grossly inadequate uh, because I didn't get into politics just merely to seek for political power and maybe become otherwise. Um, it has to take into consideration maybe section 103A of the current elections act. If one goes through that, one will be able to utilize part of it to include it uh, in the definition as it goes over, and that's act number seven of 2001. Could have a proposed draft. Yes. Uh, we'll, yes. Have a look at it and also yes. include it in your position. Position, yes, we'll Thank do that. You. Thank you very much. Can I also ask you a question? Yes. Where is it says political power? Then can you explain to us what you understand by the political power? No, can you allow me to continue? Yes. <laughs> but we will have an opportunity to ask questions. Yeah. Now we are in we are taking their concerns. Just let's throw these things, and then when it is our turn to ask questions, yeah. then we will ask the relevant questions. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, as uh, there is also a definition here dealing with coalition. Um, maybe it's section ninety-one or something, or clause ninety-one. Um, I, I believe there should be uh, clarification on what is meant by coalition. Are we referring to a merger? Are we referring to an alliance? There is need to be explicit in the definition. It only says coalition, and if we leave it like that, it can be open to uh, different interpretations. Ah, it's 105, okay. Um, furthermore, clause four, clause four, um, conducting the nomination and election of candidates for the, of, that's in clause four, so clause two, conducting the nomination and election of candidates for the office of president, member of the national assembly, mayor, etc., etc. Uh, the speaker is not included in this list, and our proposal is that the speaker should be uh, included. Because um, in the Constitution, there is reference that this IEC is involved in the conduct of the election of the speaker of the National Assembly. So the speaker should be included in this. Uh, so clause five, clause five uh, is referring to serious misconduct, serious misconduct in uh, that's three, serious misconduct. B is talking about serious misconduct. D is referring to serious violation of any other law. One doesn't know what serious misconduct is, you know. When is a misconduct serious? So there is need to be more explicit uh, in this case to avoid any misinterpretation. And uh, there is also reference to that's in four, where it talks about um, a medical board. That's understandable because there is infirmity of body or mind. But also, there is talk of violation of the Constitution. There is talk of misconduct. So there will be need also, in addition to the medical board, a judicial tribunal, which can also play a role similar to that of the medical board. Um, clause 7. Um, definition of election officer is actually needed because 
one doesn't know, this is talking about appointments, that the, there is need to publish it in the Gazette, and if there are objections, they will be taken into account, and there will be a review, and eventually um, a decision will be taken. But um, one doesn't know the scope of elections officers. Um, it's, it's, it's defined, of course, in, in the interpretation, section two or clause two, but um, does it cover like drivers, cleaners, etc.? So uh, those things need to be taken into consideration as to what election officer actually means. It has to be explicit. Um, funds, oh well, the sovereignty of the Gambia is actually crucial. That's a section in clause nine, which is dealing with funds. Uh, the sovereignty of the Gambia is actually crucial and care must be taken as to when such funds, if at all, that is permissible, should be taken because um, we should not actually um, sell our sovereignty because we actually need money in order to conduct elections. And uh, it should, we are talking about the different um, aspects, uh, it should also include the disposal, at the assets which have actually been disposed. All right. Clause 10. Um, uh, this one, the first one, one, has gone to the extent of usurping the power of the Election Boundaries Commission, which is indicated in Section 50 of the existing Constitution. And that's why I was saying it's good that the bill be premised on the Constitution. So this needs amendment to bring it in line with the with Section 650 of the Constitution. Because that one is talking about an electoral boundaries commission. Although it says under certain circumstances where the commission has not yet been established, the IEC can carry out demarcation of, of boundaries. But IEC cannot really just take it as its responsibility, because it's not its responsibility to do that work. So therefore, this section should be rephrased to bring it in line with that. Uh, um, okay, and there seems to be a contradiction here um, with the registration of voters. What is actually required? That's uh, clause 13, page 13. Clause 13, page 13. Four items have been mentioned, and these four items are found in the Elections Act as amended. But if you go to um, Schedule 3, uh, it includes five elders. So five items have been listed there. And one, the additional item, is related to the elders. Our proposal is let us stick to section two, rather in clause 13 as it is, and that form in schedule, schedule three, which includes five elders, that talk of five elders should be actually deleted. As a colleague said here, uh, you have the local authorities who deal with these matters, and let's leave out others so that they do not influence the process of registration. Um, 
clause 15. I refer to clause 15, page 14. I earlier referred to section 39 of the Constitution. And clause 15 can only stand if section 39 of the Constitution is amended. So since section 39 of the Constitution subsists, then A of clause 15 has to be deleted. C, it's on page 14. C, because here it is saying serving a sentence of imprisonment. The Constitution does not make any restriction. It's saying if you are a Gambian of sound mind and you have 18 years, you have a right to vote. So we cannot come here and include this uh, and say, well, if you are serving a sentence, that will be in violation of the Constitution. The Constitution wants every Gambian to exercise its right to vote, to determine the future of the country, to determine how the country is run. And nobody should be deprived of that, whether you're living in this country or you are abroad. When, whether you are born in the Gambia or you are born abroad. So long as you are a Gambian, the Constitution says you have a right to vote. And you are entitled to be registered in a constituency. So the A and C should go, and B, a joy to be of unsigned man, full stop. The rest should go. Whether well, detained in a mental hospital, it doesn't say so. A joy to be on, of unsigned man, that is there in section 39 of the Constitution, so that can stay. Um, if we go further, um, let's move on to 32. 32. Okay. Now, 32. Uh, all right, before we go on to 32, in 16, he made a reference to that, in fact. That is, um, it said here, 16, that's still page 14. It's saying in 16, in the subsection 4, the commission shall not conduct any registration of voters at least six months before the date scheduled for any election or referendum. Now, whether this should still stand as it is this time, <laughs> we have to look at it very seriously. Because registration will not be complete until the 11th of July. And that's less than six months before the presidential election. So that will, if we are to proceed with the election, that will create a problem, it will create a crisis. So this has to be reviewed. You know, either the timeline is reduced, or at least for the time being, it is not made part of this bill. That needs to be considered very seriously. And we should not, uh, when we say uh, six months, registration ends after six months, there are also other processes that take place. Appeals, objections, the revising court has to decide. It may go, there may be appeal to the high court. So all these processes are in line and it may take a longer time. It may be an additional month or more. So we have to consider all those things. And this matter, the best thing to do is to forget about it for the time being. And it can be looked into uh, later. Because I will not suggest that we postpone 
we are not suggesting that the presidential election be postponed. Rather, we deal with this issue, maintain the same date as in the IEC calendar, and then move forward. Um, yes, uh, there is also talk about continuous registration. What that means is not too clear to us. Um, still, still 16, we're still in 16. Continuous registration is, is referred to. So what that actually means is not uh, clear. There is also talk of registration centers and registration, uh, no, not registration, polling, polling centers and uh, polling stations. That area is a bit murky. It's not too clear as to what polling centers are and what polling stations are. And there is interchange, continuous use. I can't remember which clause, but it's there. So that that needs to be reviewed and then become more explicit uh, for, for us to understand and know what we are required to do. Uh, let's go now to 32, 33. Objections. Now the registration is complete and uh, people may object to certain names being on the register of voters. And this is significant that um, the fees, the fees to be charged is left with the IEC. It's the IEC who by regulation should indicate what the fees should be. Um, so it's not specified. Our view is that the fee charge should be reasonable so that you don't make it, um, so that it becomes affordable for anybody who is objecting. Suppose you have about 100 people who have been wrongly registered. So if you, if, if the fee is high uh, in the section so that we do not give the IEC that much latitude just to charge any fee. Um, Okay, now if we look at 17 and 40, if we compare the two, 17 and 40, the arithmetic doesn't seem to work. 17 and 14. 17, 1. At any time before a general election, a registered voter who is resident in an electoral division other than that in which he or she is registered for not less than two months, may apply to the returning officer of the, where he or she is resident for his or her name to be entered or transferred. No, that's not the one. It must be two. Okay, any application on the subsection one shall be made not less than 21 days before the last day of nomination. 21 days before the one last day of nomination to the constituency where the applicant is resident, where the application relates to nomination, or made not less than 90 days, 90, 90 days before election. And notices for election come. Um, this one, if you go to 40, this is 90 days. Let's go to 40, you see. 40 is saying, and uh, that's two. The notice referred to in subsection one, that is notice of an election, shall state the date, which shall not be less than 30 days after the publication of the notice, 
and the place of nomination of candidates. The date on which, or the dates between which, as may be appropriate. No. So here you're talking about 30 days. If you add it to the notice for nomination, it's less than 90. So that needs to be, the arithmetic anyway doesn't seem to work out. Uh, 43. Um, 43, our position is that the deposits which were agreed upon by the National Assembly in 2018 when they amended the um, 2016 elections amended the Elections Act. So the the they returned, they simply returned to the previous fees. That is $10,000 for a presidential candidate, $5,000 for a National Assembly candidate, $2,500 for a mayoral candidate, and $1,250 for candidate for council. So our position is that this, these fees should be maintained. Fees for elections should not be forbidden to candidates. And uh, they are quite reasonable, and they should be left as they are in the Act. That's what exists in the Elections Act. And that, our recommendation is that that is what we should go by. Um, yeah, let's go to 51. 51, what subsection? Uh, uh, it's dealing with the withdrawal of candidature. Well, it's saying three months, not later than three months before the date. Oh, well, let me read the whole thing. A candidate may withdraw from his or her candidature by notice in writing, signed by him or her, and delivered by himself or herself, or one of the persons nominating him or her to the return officer, not later than three months before the date of election. Here to the arithmetic does not work. Our proposal is seven days. Seven days before the date of election. Because you are talking about nomination being uh, between the date between nomination and uh, election being 21 days, at most minimum six days. So if you have three months that's outside even nomination, so how can you talk about withdrawal? Our proposal is it should be seven days and we further propose that uh, the date between nomination and election be one month to give political parties adequate time to uh, campaign. We go to 55. Uh, uh, well, I've also already dealt with that. There's polling centers and uh, polling stations. 60. All right. We are, we have decided to be a little bit innovative. We don't know whether that's acceptable. But rather than merely pulling agents, merely pulling agents, we can have pulling supervisors. Pulling supervisors in cases where candidates do not have adequate uh, pulling agents to cover all places or even where they have adequate uh, uh, pulling agents to cover all pulling stations, sometimes you do have failure in, in terms of appearance. So our proposal is to include, of course, all these things as, as Madam Chair was uh, is proposing is that we should have a position paper. That will be done and it will be included there. Our proposal is to have 
a polling supervisor who will be allowed at the polling station um, and can replace a polling agent who has failed to appear. So that, that's food for thought. Um, we go on to 65. Our proposal regarding the time of opening and closure of polls uh, is that so long as it's a public holiday, we don't have problem with the time. It can still be maintained between 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. But if it is not going to be a public holiday, uh, and there is nothing in the bill here suggesting that elections should not should be the, the day of election should be a public holiday. Nothing suggests that here. So we are working on the good faith or the goodwill of the executive deciding whether to declare a public holiday or not. It's a practice which has been going on. So but if it is our view is that so long as it's a public holiday, in which case it should be included in the bill, then between five and eight sorry, between five eight AM and five PM is okay. Otherwise we suggest seven AM to seven PM. This will give time to people who have gone to work to come and vote when they close from work, or those who close late from work to rush to the polling station at 7 a.m. and vote before going to work. We must really work from the principle, because when I was not trying to be idle, when I quoted the sovereignty resides on the people, and the people have the right to vote and participate in elections. These are rights. They are sovereign, and government derive their authority from the sovereignty of the people. So in that case, we should always ensure that citizens' right to vote is protected. We should endeavor to see that every citizen has the opportunity to go and vote, and there should be no stumbling block. And this is why we are totally opposed to postponing the registration of Gambians living abroad. We are totally opposed to the registration, rather postponement of registration of Gambians living abroad. The IEC, the government should endeavor to ensure that the funds are provided and that, for example, uh, there is $54 million uh, by National Assembly members. Maybe they can consider uh, forgetting that to ensure that that amount which is available can be utilized uh, for that particular purpose. But the issue is that all those concerned should endeavor that the Gambians, our fellow Gambians abroad in the diaspora, are not deprived of their right to vote. All these years, all these years, they have been deprived of their right to vote. It was in the 1997 Constitution. It was there just like that and nothing was done to ensure that they were there. Now, they supported change. And they were hoping that this time they would be able to exercise their right to vote. So we should endeavor the bill should, yeah, that's nothing, the, I think the question is right, should they, um, should they be, be given the right to vote. It's there in the Constitution. He says you have the right to vote. So that's not the right question. It's what 
is going to be done to ensure that they exercise their right to vote. That's the correct question. And I hope efforts will be made by both the IEC and the government to ensure that Gambians abroad who contribute $187 million annually to the coffers of relatives, etc., in the Gambia should be given that right. They should not be deprived of that right. Um, we we'll go on to 66. 66. Um, yes? Sorry, uh -huh. uh, sorry to interrupt you. Yes. There's a vehicle registration number BJL149392. Um, if well, you can give me time, whatever this is, I'll I go by that. <laughs> uh, do we allocate time? As, I, as was said, and we all know, this is a very important engagement, and every, uh, what is it called, proposal, suggestion matters. So, Honorable Cissé, what do you say? We should do it at this time. Already, the gentleman has taken a lot of time. So, we have to follow. Let us wait. The, the two gentlemen who spoke previously really did not take that long. I think they took less than 15, 20 minutes. So we can let, let, let's allow them. Just try to summarize where you can. Okay, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, very quickly, maybe I'll try and finish within 10 minutes. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right. Yes, so um, 86. 86. Mm -hmm. Yes, we, we no 66 is a technical, it's not practical. That's signing of the voter's card that the um, presiding officer should. It's not practical because of the nature of the card. So the presiding officer cannot. Uh, and sign. Um, yes, 86, that's what I was saying. I, I'm skipping some. But 82 is talking about transmission. This is very important to, to us. 82, that's transmission of result. First, we are of the opinion that every polling agent should be given a copy of the result. And then secondly, also, um, the transmission of the result with the development of technology, we believe that every candidate can be given the results, say, through WhatsApp, for example. That's transmission. You transmit the same result to the headquarters, but ensure that every candidate gets the results through WhatsApp. Uh, uh, so what some numbers can be taken before the polling, and then the candidates will get it. And uh, go on then. Very quickly. Okay, section of clause 92D. 92D. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Fine. Uh, 92D. Uh, so it doesn't have D. We are the ones proposing D. Huh? No, 92. 92, which is dealing with prohibitions during election campaign. Okay. Yes. Um, our proposal that it should include um, civil servants. Civil servants who, by virtue of their position, are using their position to support 
uh, political parties. That is, they use their position to support political parties. So that should be D, so that it's prohibited. Uh, so 93.1 it should be, okay, we can include that in the, uh, 102, yes, 102 is significant. Uh, it's talking, that's the one which is dealing with referendum. Um, referendum, no, it's not 102, it's 131, 100. And thirty one. Yes, referendum question and notice of referendum. Uh, section one hundred and two of the Constitution makes provision for referendum. That means if at all the members of the National Assembly are dealing with an issue, the, a bill is brought, and an issue arises, the members of the National Assembly can propose a referendum. And the speaker is involved in the process. Otherwise, it's through amendment of the Constitution itself, which is provided in Section 226. So, Section 131 does not speak the language of the Constitution. And therefore, it needs to be reviewed to bring it in line with the Constitution. And the same applies to 140. It says, the result of the referendum shall be determined by a simple majority. Again, this does not speak the language of the Constitution. Uh, if you go to section 226, it's saying something different. So that too needs to be reviewed to bring it in line with the Constitution. 142, finally. Um, referendum may be of interest to civil society. And we feel that polling agents can include the IPC and the CSO. The IEC cannot be a polling agent. They saying IEC appoints polling agents. We feel that is inappropriate. The IEC conducting elections and appointing its own polling agents, no. So we can leave that to the IPC and civil society. I think there is something like the coalition of uh, civil society uh, matters related to election. Thank you very much. Thanks for the patience. Thank you.